Hello folks, Gavin here from Player TV, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Maximus 9 Hero from Aces for Public Gamers. This board has a lot of features, it looks good, and it's priced around £248 at launch due to a leaked document that I got my hands on. Um, is this the proper Z270 motherboard for you? Let's find out now in our video review. So, the Asus Republica Gamers ROG Z270 Maximus 9 Hero is um, it's one of the new Kaby Lake launch boards, so it supports Intel 7th and 6th generation processors, the i3, the i5s and the i7s. So obviously Skylake is supported um, and you can make use of the new features that is, um, the Z270 offers, especially Asus's upgraded um, a lot of the features of the Z170 platform. So as I mentioned at the start, the launch pricing is around £248 for the Hero. Um, obviously this isn't an official Asus price, um, this is, uh, I, I, I got a document um, that was leaked to me that retailers are going to be charging this on, on launch day, which is today obviously. Um, it has plenty of features, so it has Asus Aura RGB, um, which is also syncable with the likes of the Asus peripherals, the Asus um, Strix graphics cards and well, all the RGB Asus goods. So if you're looking to sync everything together, so everything looks fantastic, and everyone likes a good, nice, uniformed RGB setup, then obviously it's not just highly customizable, but you know you can set it to how you like it, and everything will sync with this particular board. Um, one notable thing that I will mention is the Realtek ALC ROG A um, S1220. Um, audio configuration, the codec itself. Um, so Asus Supreme FX or ROG Supreme FX chip has been upgraded. So the onboard is more beefier. Um, it's it's much better than the Z170 onboard. So obviously, if you're a big fan of on, if you're a big fan of audio, um, you've got a decent set of headphones, and you don't have a, a DAC or a you know an upgraded sound card, then this board is still gonna power them no problem at all. Um, it comes with a massive Republic of Gamer software package, so you've got the likes of um, ROG RAM Disk, ROG RAM Cache, um, two, it's actually ROG RAM Cache 2, um, ROG Keybot 2, um, you've got the likes of the AI Suite 3, so you can overclock through the operating system, um, real-time overclocking, should I say, which, you know... It was absolutely fantastic. You don't have to do it in the BIOS. I mean, I would recommend overclocking in the BIOS because obviously that's what I'm used to and it's a lot safer in my opinion. But anyway, you can do that. You've got like some clone drive um, as well and Game First 4. So plenty of software to play around with. It doesn't just, it isn't all gimmicky, you know. It does actually support um, the motherboards quite well. It's more user experience. And if you've got a nice software feature set that allows... The, well, the user or you to get the most out of the board and the, and the spec because there's no point having the Supreme FX upgraded chip um, if you haven't got a nice software system to use it. So you've got the likes. Um, the ROG Audio does have you know a basic mode and an advanced mode. So if you're a bit of a noob and you just want to play around with the audio settings, you can do that even if you're a beginner. So yeah, um, looking at the board itself, we have... Um, four DIMM slots capable of up to 64 gig of DDR4 memory. Um, it supports up to memory of 4,133 4, megahertz, so just over four gigahertz on the memory overclocked, um, which is absolutely fantastic. It has three PCI x16 slots. Um, two of them do feature the ROG metal shield, so the ROG armor. Um, the bottom one, however, doesn't. And it also features two PCI six times one lit, so likes of your sound cards, your RAID controllers, etc., etc. You know, there's plenty of um, connectability. SLI Crossfire is obviously supported as well, as you would expect. Um, it's got dual M.2 ports. Now, the, both of the, the M.2 ports are at the front of the board. You've got one at the top, at the top of the PCI one slot, and you've got one towards the bottom, just above the bottom PCI times 16 lane. So you can run them 
Um, you can run the highest storage, um, you know, the M.2 drives, you can run them blazing fast speeds. As you know, the T281s are, are absolutely phenomenal, and then the support. So yeah, the Hero support stat. You've got six SATA 3 ports. Um, so obviously these support RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10. Um, obviously to set it up you'll need to use Intel's rapid storage um, utility to do that. Um, but it's very easy to use. Um, wireless LAN is included as well as obviously an RJ45 for your Ethernet. Um, it also includes Bluetooth 4.1 connectivity as well. So phenomenal connectivity there. Um, it does have a header for the ROG um, the ROG OC panel, so you can use the OC panel with this board. You can also use the front panel as well, so the ROG front panel, um, which you know you can get around from retail. It's been around for a while now, but it does support this. Not all boards do support it, but it's nice to see that the Maximus 9 Hero does support it. It features a plethora of onboard buttons, the likes of start button, reset, safe boot, retry. It does have a slow mode as well, um, as well as an LN2 mode, which, you know, I'm going to make the most of that, because uh, <laughs> obviously I'm a sub-zero overclocker. You've got RGB headers as well, so you can connect RGB strips up that are compatible, like Super Cable Mod RGB strips. And obviously that works with Asus Aura Sync as well, so remember that. There's a plethora of, um, you know, there's a water cooling zone, so you've got like sort of pump, um, you can plug your pump directly in and control it from the BIOS. You've got plenty of um, fan headers as well, all, all around the outside of the board. We also have a USB 3.1 front panel, um, which you know a lot of the a lot of the new top end cases come with a front panel 3.1. This board supports it, um, and yeah, you know as you can see, it's a very good, very nice looking board. It doesn't have the rug armor um, like sort of the formula and the code has, but. You know, this is relatively cheap compared to those two boards. Um, but yeah, going to be testing it with Intel's KB Lake i7 7700K processor. Um, going to be testing it with 16 gig of crucial RAM. As you can see, the, the test setup is here. And yeah, it's time to put this board for its paces, see how it compares. And yeah, let's roll some benchmarks. So, the Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 9 um, Hero, um, it's a winner, it's a very good board, um, obviously, you know, it's got a lot of features with it, it's got a lot of connectivity, and obviously, likes of the rear IDO, for example, it has four USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports, has display port and HDMI for your onboard audio, has a BIOS flashback button, um, and a CMOS button, button reset as well. It also has um, your 3.5 mil audio jacks, which is, you know, great. It's got spid F out um, for optical, USB um, 3.1 Type A and Type C, um, obviously an RJ45 connected as well. So everything that you would expect to find on a top end mid range to top end board is a pre is present on the Hero. Um, it's got a lot going for it. Obviously, it's. Slightly more expensive than what you would pay for the you would have paid for the Z170 Hero when it came out. Um, this is probably more in the range of the the Hero Alpha, the Z170 Hero Alpha board, and um, the Maximus Eight. And and to, to be honest, you know the likes of the heat sink itself, the RGB or a sink, you know everything's fantastic on this board. You know, um, the performance itself, obviously, you can see through the benchmarks. It is 
it is a contender. It keeps up the code, if not beats the code. So obviously this particular board is, you know, something that I would... This is a particular board I would go out and buy. Um, something middle of the road. It has an LN2 mode. So obviously the overclocking features through the Asus UEFI BIOS is all there. The likes of the LLC load line calibration. Everything like that. The onboard audio does sound good. Um, obviously I've tested that as well. I have had this board. The... I've had actually all all of the Asus boards. You can find the links down below to all the boards that we're reviewing because this is a launch day. And if you're watching it after today, then obviously I'll upload. I'll put more links to the particular KB Lake boards that will be reviewed on the videos. Um, but yeah, if I was going to give this board an award, which obviously I am going to give it an award, based on the features, the price, the performance, the price, and everything that goes along with it, it's a gold award winning board. It's hard to fault. Um, the only thing I would say, and I've said this before, the PCI Time 16 slot at the bottom, um, it would be nice, it'd be nice to have the full matching ROG metal armor across all of the bottoms, across all of the PCI Time 16 slots, but you know, it just wasn't to be. Obviously, I do love the onboard buttons. It means that if you're using it in an open test case environment or an open PC environment, you don't have to plug in all the crappy headers. But you do get a Q connector in that, so it is easier to collect it than obviously most boards who don't include that. Asus are obviously not just, I'm not going to say pioneers, but they're at the forefront of motherboards. And, you know, as I said, I'm proud to give it our gold award. Um, in terms of value, it's... Well, given the, the launch pricing hasn't been officially announced by Asus yet, it's all, you know, what retailers are probably going to sell it for. Um, I'll probably go on a limb and give it our value award as well. Um, the only reason I'm going to give it the value award is because it has virtually the same sort of feature set as the code. Um, it's got the same sort of, you know, 8 plus 2 fit power phase design. So it's got all the power and all the overclocking features of the code. All it doesn't have really is the ROG armor, um, which, given the price, it's what you would expect. Um, but yeah, everything's you know pretty decent about this board. It's like I said, I haven't really got any major faults about it. It performs well. It's, in my opinion, according to the leaked pricing of um, two hundred and forty-eight pounds in the UK. You know, it's it's not a cheap board, but it's still an it's an enthusiast board. It's not a you know, it's not a budget board, you know, Asus have sort of split both, split the motherboard ranges on the desktop range up now, so the cheaper boards, the more budget oriented boards, the bang for buck boards, are the, are now the Republic of Gamers strict range, and the gaming, the higher end boards, you know, the middle to high end, to the full or blown out in overclocking slash enthusiast boards, are the Maximus 9 Hero, uh, the Maximus 9 range, and this obviously is a Maximus 9 Hero, and if you need a hero, this is the one you want. I need a hero! Sorry, I'll stop that now. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. This has been uh, the review of the Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 9 Hero. I've been Gavin from Player, Player TV. Um, please leave a like. Um, please hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Check out our other KB Lake Motherboard Z270 reviews in the description below. All the links are, are, are all there. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and a big thank you to Asus for sending these for sending this particular board in for review. Thanks for watching guys and ciao for now.